So Tom, about 12 months ago, made me record a video to him as if it was 12 months in the future. And I had to talk about three things that haven't happened yet as if they had already happened. So it was a bit of a weird concept. I had, I definitely did like two or three different videos, um, to get used to talking like that, um, and doing it really authentically, um, which I guess is sort of like a manifestation technique, visualization technique for living that you already have something before you have it and acting as if you, you have something. Anyway, we, we made this video, I sent it to Tom. I just did it in my car outside of an appointment one day, actually, um, sent it to Tom and I suddenly had this moment, I think, was it Friday or Sunday? I don't remember. One day last week, I was standing in my garden and I'm checking my emails on my phone and I get this email from the government um, and my heart starts racing because every time I get an email from the government, it's always something to do with my residency, my status. Am I allowed to stay in Australia? Am I not allowed to stay in Australia? So my whole life is depending on it. And my heart starts beating really fast and like shaking and thinking, what's going on? And I'm having a look at the email and it says, um, they're pretty much inviting me to the la the final stage of my immigration journey, which has taken me 11 years. Wow. To get into this country, um, inviting me to my ceremony, my Australian citizenship ceremony, which is next month, July 17. So, and I just burst into tears. I sat in my garden and I just, I, I just, and I'm not a crier usually, but I was just so filled with emotion because for me, that signifies the end of my journey, um, stability. I can stay in Australia. I've got freedom choice and control over my own life, which I haven't had for a, a very long time, um, for a variety of different reasons, which I'll give you the short version today if you want, but, um, it was just such a huge achievement for me. And it's, you know, a lot of people come to this country, they do two or three years of working and then they get their permanent residency straight away. I didn't have the same journey as those people. Mine was, um, full of twists and turns. Um, I had to do a lot of things I didn't want to do to stay here, um, which meant, you know, I learned a lot of stuff about myself during during that time. Um, so, and then I, I suddenly looked at this email and then I remembered the video that Tom and I did and I realised that all three things on that video had, had actually come to fruition. So the first thing was I wanted to buy my first home. I'm, actually, I'm sitting in my, my home right now. I've been here for six months. Um, last year, because of all my visa issues and, and immigration issues, I've spent a lot of money on lawyers, um, immigration agents, visas, chopping and changing around just to try and stay here. So in the past, every time I had a lump sum of commission, it would come in and go back out again. So I haven't had the luxury of, of having the deposit, um, and the stamp duty, which is, you know, it's a big chunk of money. Um, but I made that conscious decision 12 months ago when I was doing the video with Tom, how am I going to get this, this money together to buy a house in the next six to 12 months? And I pretty much worked it backwards. And it, it, for me, the only thing I needed to do was to book 20 appraisals a month. That was the only thing I needed to do. And I knew because my conversion rate is so high and the, the commissions I'm getting are quite good that eventually that would turn into a deposit and I just kept doing that every month and it worked so that was the first thing on my video and the second thing was the citizenship and to get that letter from the government within the next 12 months pass the citizenship exam um, and pretty much be formally accepted into this country even though it's been my home for 11 years and then the third thing was to, I don't have any family here in Australia. So, um, you know, my mum had me quite late. She's in her mid late seventies now and she's getting older and, you know, that's been playing on my mind. Do I go back home to England to take care of her? She doesn't have any other family in the UK really. 
um, to take her immediate care of her. She's getting a few health problems. So I'm thinking, how on earth am I going to do this by looking after my mum from Australia? So I made the decision to move my mum to Australia. Um, you know, my mum's taking care of me my whole life. Um, it's time to give back and take care of her. Unfortunately, my dad actually walked out on us when I was 16 and we lost our house. We lost everything. So my mum went into a, my mum and I went into a council house, which I think you guys call a housing association over here. And she's pretty much, um, taking care of me throughout that whole time. So it's now time to turn the tables and take care of my mum. And I've made the decision to move her over. Uh, we've packed up the house and I've paid for her ticket over and she's arriving next month and come and live in Australia so I can, you know, have my family here and take care of my, my elder, el well, I shouldn't say elderly because she's not actually that old, but um, my older mother. Yeah. So those are the three things I wanted to achieve. And I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm very proud and pleased that I've managed to do that. Congratulations. I think we should all just give you a huge round of applause because I think that <laughs> is just, it's absolutely phenomenal. Like you, within a space of 12 months, have essentially been able to completely transform your life. Um, yeah. Things that you wanted have manifested have come true, but also you got really specific and you said, this oh is how many appraisals that I need to book in order to get to reach my end of year goal, which is, which is to, to get the deposit for the house. And it was yeah. 20 appraisals. So I think yeah, that's one, you know, out there who's listening, who's thinking, you know, these are so far ahead. How am I going to do this? Um, do what I actually did and just break it down into, into really small incremental achievable pieces. Um, yeah. 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 And the other thing that you see, you, with the essential of the video that you made was a video from the future and you were speaking as if everything had already happened. Yeah. Which, <laughs> you were just, yeah, yeah. It, it already is. It was, it was really, it was interesting. It was basically saying, hey, Tom, uh, mum's arrived in Australia now. She's settling in really well. Um, I've just, oh, sorry. One of the other things that I did sneak in there, I think I had like a fourth one. Um, was to hit a million dollar GCI. Um, I've been one of those agents always sat around 500K, 500K. And I genuinely believe I, the whole immigration stuff was, it was like a mental jail for me. So as soon as I, so it affected my life and I was trying to maintain my, um, you know, my work and my prospecting and trying to not let it affect me, but it does affect you when you don't know if you can stay or not and you're, the, the government keeps chopping and changing the rules all the time. So you have to keep moving around and changing companies and you build up a database and a clientele and then they change the rules again. It's like, oh, sorry, you can't stay here anymore. You've got to now move to Perth. So I had to go to Perth for a year and the market was crap. Um, you know, it wasn't, there were, nobody was listing and selling. So I didn't have any um, income coming in. I was doing one sale every two months, but everybody was in the same position. So it was pretty challenging times i actually sold my car to pay for my new visa and i was a carless real estate agent for about nine months which i hid from my company my colleagues I was so ashamed and embarrassed about it and i was getting buses to appointments and things like that and it was really quite a, a horrible time for me um then i had i found a way to come back to victoria as a regional um real estate agent it was the only way i could get stay in the country and find uh, a way to to be in real estate was to go to move to Geelong. I've never even been to Geelong before. I just got on a plane and came with an, on a one-way ticket and rented a room of someone or flatmates. And, you know, that was four years ago. And now I'm sitting in my own house. So it, it's been an incredible journey. Um, but going back to the GCI, the, the 500K was every single year. And as soon as I got that piece of paper, the permanent residency, it was like a mental jail had lifted off me and I started to do 750 and 700s every year. And I started to make more money because I had that take, that mental jail taken away from me. As soon as I got that piece of paper, I moved to McGrath and since moving to McGrath and doing the coaching with Tom, I'm now making twice as much money and 
happier and just have more flow and you know everything's just going really well and now I'm on track to do a million dollars I've done 525,000 GCI since January um so I'm on track to hit that million dollar mark now and that's been fantastic that's yeah. phenomenal that's absolutely phenomenal considering from where you started to where you are now um that's incredible and I think never be ashamed of the times when you've got to take the bus because that just shows how resilient you are it's shown yeah. a lot of people in your situation would have probably given up and said I, I can't do real estate but you persisted you found a way to make it work and you found a way to not let it get in the way of you you know going out there and showing up and going to listings um and I think those your struggles are the things that make you as, as strong as you are today Percent, and I, I, they they say that adversity is actually can, can be one of your greatest teachers, and I really believe in that. And difficult things, when you do difficult things, it helps you do more difficult things. Yes. So the, the difficult things, they're not as difficult anymore. So that makes sense. So, you know, um, I think the second thing would be sitting down with the owners and actually trying to understand what it is they're trying to do before you talk about right price, before you give them your fees. I've got a, an amazing form. It's called a LESS, the Listing Inquiry Form. This form that I had my first real estate job in England 16 years ago, and I've just kept modifying it. I'll happily send you a copy. It's actually got questions on the back. I think the third thing is... This is a, a script that I use that is trying to subtly knock out my competition. So I always say to an owner, you know, I'll ask the questions beforehand, have you ever sold a property before, um, depending on how they answer that. Another thing that I do usually ask is, do you know the difference between a salesperson and a trained negotiator? A salesperson. Because we've got, a, we've got a lot of salespeople in Geelong. Yeah. But we don't have a lot of trained negotiators. Do you mind if I show you how I actually negotiate? It's given you a test drive of Real Estate Gym. Let me tell you, if you're a subscriber and a member of the gym, you'll be getting videos from our co-coaches all the time. You'll be getting mentors, you'll be getting scripts, you'll be getting dialogues, you'll be getting templates, and most importantly, my prospector, your personal accountability system to make more calls, get more appointments, get more listings. From around $10 per week, realestategym.com.au, your personal code chat.